Bitcoin crossing the $70,000 mark for the first time on Friday this morning. It's now above $72,000. Join us right now to talk Bitcoin is Michael Saylor, Micro uh, Strategy Executive Chairman and 8K out from the company this morning, revealing it just bought more than $800 million in Bitcoin. As of the end of last month, his company held about 200,000 Bitcoins. And Michael, I uh, want to thank you for joining us. You have been uh, early and courageous and you continue to double down. Um, I want to talk about where you think Bitcoin is, but also want to talk about how you think about a micro strategy in your company as a proxy for Bitcoin now that ETFs are available to the public. Sure. Well, I think I'd start just with Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin is, is certainly at least digital gold. It's going to eat gold. It's got all of the great attributes of gold, and it's got none of the defects of gold. If you could teleport gold from New York to Tokyo in a, in a few minutes, people would like it. Um, it's going to divert capital from risk, a risk assets and risk ETFs like SPY. And you can see that uh, these, uh, these ETFs are doing that. It's going to be incorporated into a lot of funds like the BlackRock Global Opportunities Fund or the Strategic Income Opportunities Fund. And so as it, it's an asset class. As it goes into other funds, it's going to become structural. The halving is going to cut the organic supply of natural sellers in half around April 20th. That means there's only about $31, $32 million a day of natural sellers. And the price of Bitcoin is going to have to adjust up in order to meet that investor demand. So I think that's what's going to happen next to the asset class. In terms, though, of, of how investors should think about your company, uh, and right now I think they think of your company as a proxy for Bitcoin. It was a way for investors, uh, frankly, who didn't want to buy the underlying coins to get access uh, to, uh, to Bitcoin and exposure to Bitcoin. The question now, though, that these ETFs have been approved and, and folks are are, are, are funneling money towards BlackRock and so many others. How should they think about your company versus doing that? Yeah, so BlackRock is like the, the container ship or the super tanker of Bitcoin. It can, they can take a billion dollars a day into their capital structure, and they can haul that very efficiently, 25 basis points. Micro strategies like air freight, we, we've got a higher performance. So What's going on here? MicroStrategy's got leverage. If we borrowed $800 million at 62 basis points, is there any company in the world that you wouldn't like to invest in that could borrow a billion dollars at less than 1% interest to invest in your best idea? So we get that very intelligent leverage. It's, uh, it's non-recourse, it's unsecured, and then we buy Bitcoin with it. That leverage gives us volatility. The vol it gives us performance. The performance gives us volatility. The volatility attracts capital, and we can then leverage more. Um, it's kind of intelligent because it's, uh, it's convertible debt. Um, it's, uh, it's given our shareholders more Bitcoin per share this week than they had a few weeks ago. So it's very accretive for them. And it's pretty compelling for every investor. If you're Bitcoin curious right now and you want to buy Bitcoin at the all-time high, how do you get the upside in Bitcoin with downside protection? MicroStrategy sold $800 million in debt, and we have $12, billion, $13 billion of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So, so we're giving you an over-collateralized loan and the upside. But if you're a Bitcoin maximalist and you love Bitcoin and you want to hold it forever, the ETFs charge you 25 basis points. MicroStrategy is accreting. We're giving you a yield against your shares in a tax efficient fashion. So the maximalists like the equity, the uh, the hedgers, they kind of like the upside with downside protection. The traders love the vol. You know, we've got a hundred X, a hundred vol asset here and they just like the vol. So we're, we're unique because you can't really trade options on the ETFs and an ETF isn't going to issue a convertible bond with upside to Bitcoin, but downside protection. Michael Saylor breaks silence on Bitcoin price pause. As Bitcoin experiences a period of price pause, Michael Saylor, who is the chairman of MicroStrategy, has made a public declaration that, that has resonated throughout the cryptocurrency community. His message is simple and very direct. Bet on Bitcoin is what Michael Saylor said. 
and Michael's statement comes at a, at a pivotal moment for Bitcoin. And after significant price movements, the world's biggest cryptocurrency is seeing unusual calm. And in a recent tweet, Michael Saylor reinforced his unwavering confidence in Bitcoin, saying to bet on the digital asset despite the current price pause. And this bold proclamation is not out of character for Michael Saylor, who has consistently championed Bitcoin as a superior store of value and a hedge against inflation. And MicroStrategy, under Michael Saylor's leadership, has been at a forefront of corporate investment in Bitcoin, and the company's aggressive acquisition strategy has seen it amass a substantial Bitcoin portfolio, making it really one of the largest institutional holders of cryptocurrency. And Michael Saylor's latest message to bet on Bitcoin might be a reaffirmation of his belief in Bitcoin's long-term real potential. And the timing for Michael Saylor's statement is noteworthy, though, as it is noteworthy, though, as it coincides with a broader market sentiment that is cautiously optimistic. And on Friday, the price of Bitcoin went above sixty-eight thousand dollars for the first time in nearly a month as bulls emerged after eight weeks of sideways to lower movement. And Michael Saylor, who has always been known for his unwavering conviction. In the queen of cryptocurrencies has made his company one of the largest institutional holders of Bitcoin. And recently, after price corrections, Bitcoin has crossed sixty-eight thousand dollars, fueling investors' optimism. And while the market waits to see if this rise will continue or hold, Michael Saylor does remain confident in the long-term potential of Bitcoin. In what seems to be a very well-aimed tweet, Michael Saylor shouted his love for digital gold, reminding everyone that despite the current calm, he remains convinced that the Bitcoin is the best cash hideout and an anti-inflation shield, and nothing new under the sun for the apostle of crypto spear. And under his guidance, MicroStrategy has piled bitcoins like squirrels and nuts, becoming one of the largest institutional whales in the pool. And with frantic purchases, Michael Saylor's company has built a reputation as the chief holder. And his latest rallying cry, "Bet on Bitcoin," is just another episode in his epic saga, where he tirelessly plays the long-term Bitcoin card. And so the stock market may well take a pause, but for Michael Saylor, it's always time to bet big and go all in. And in the end, be it rain or shine in the market, Michael Saylor remains a tireless preacher of Bitcoin faith, convinced that the future belongs to daring crypto betters. But the real question is right now: Is Bitcoin ready for a new peak? In the midst of a searching crypto market, Michael Saylor wields his megaphone once again. His intervention is timely. On Friday, Bitcoin crossed sixty-six thousand and sixty-seven thousand mark for the first time in nearly a month. After eight weeks of stagnation, and the bulls finally made an appearance, pushing the crypto star to sixty-seven thousand seven hundred dollars in intraday trading before taking a brief nap. And with a ten percent up over the past one week, Bitcoin seems ready for new peaks and to once again attract investors. So, so Michael, I I try to understand the mathematics, and I, I know people like you. You went to MIT, and and uh, it, it just seems maybe it's more understandable. Uh, for you or or Andreessen or Peter Thiel or or, or whatever, I, at 17 down from 68, and you know your lever your leverage and everything else. Did you ever wake up in the middle of the night and 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 have any doubt whatsoever? That that's my one question because I was thinking about you at 17,000, and now I look at it now and it's I, I just can't believe what your the, the market cap of your company is based on it now. I guess and the other thing is. When it halves, should we, if we look at it on stock to flow, do we have to just double what the potential price is based on if you use that metric? Is that a valid metric to use? And after the halving, shouldn't it be one hundred and forty thousand immediately if if it's worth seventy two now? Two good questions, and thanks for asking me. Um, first, with regard to Bitcoin, no, there's there's no doubt in my mind Bitcoin was a better investment at seventeen thousand than it was at sixty five thousand. I take the Warren Buffett view on this. Bitcoin's a, a superior investment to gold, equity bonds, and real estate because it's digital. You can trade it a million times faster than conventional assets using a computer. It's available. Most other assets only trade less than twenty percent of the time. Bitcoin's trading one hundred and sixty eight hours a week. We bought eight hundred million dollars of Bitcoin, and a lot of it uh, we bought uh, over the weekend when all the conventional markets are closed. 
It's global. It's the most widely recognized and trusted uh, investment asset in the world right now. It's ethical because it's the king of all commodities. There's no issuer. There's no company. There's no country controlling it. And fundamentally, it's, it's useful. Thousands of market makers can trade it all the time. Millions of companies can trade it. Billions of people. If you want to buy a house on Saturday in Africa, this is the way to do it. If you want to buy a car on, on Sunday morning, this is the way to do it. So, so it's a pretty great asset. It's, it's the greatest of the assets, in, in my opinion. There's no second best asset. So. And while the market holds its breath, Michael Saylor acts as the bullish conductor, urging Bitcoin faithful to keep the faith and not succumb to doubt. And research firm favors Bitcoin's covered strangle strategy to enhance portfolio yield by 17%. And research firm 10x suggests the Bitcoin holders to use the option strategy to enhance portfolio yield by 17%. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin investors who are looking to generate extra income in addition to their spot market holdings should consider setting a covered angle option strategy research from 10x which has an impeccable record of predicting market trends set on Monday. And the covered strangle strategy involves holding the underlying asset in the spot market and simultaneously selling an out of money call option at levels above the underlying assets going market rate and selling the OTM put at strikes below the underlying spot market price. The premium received for selling shorting the call option or protecting the counterparty from price rallies and selling the put or insurance against downtrends represents the extra yield. And 10x suggests selling a $100,000 strike call which is 50% above Bitcoin's current market price and a $50,000 strike put both expiring in December 2024 while holding the crypto in the spot market. Our favorite strategy is to buy Bitcoin spot, sell $100,000 strike call and sell 50,000 strike put for December 2024 expi expiry and selling the call could yield 11% and selling the put could yield 6% is what Marcus, founder of 10x Research said in Monday's client note detailing the suggestion. Hence, this strategy provides us with either a 17% downside buffer or 17% more real depending on where Bitcoin closes in December, plus we would capture all the upside for Bitcoin, is what he said. And this strategy is preferred when the market outlook is bullish but the uptrend is expected to unfold slowly, keeping implied volatility or investors expectations for price turbulence low. And in such conditions, options, particularly OTM calls and put options, bleed value faster as expiry nears making money for sellers. And the strategy, though appealing, is now without is not without risk and requires a high tolerance for risk. So that's it guys from here today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and do hit the like button.